tous de DDO. Attention pour H0, moins une minute. Top H0, moins une minute. Voilà donc, c'est parti. OK, Ariane so here we are, one minute. Ariane 5, flight VA217, ABS2 and Athena Fidus under the fairing. So silence now, and we're going to enjoy the show from the terrace. Enjoy it too. And uh, we'll tell you what we experience in a few minutes. Thanks. À tous de DDO, attention pour des comptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité. Top, allumage moteur Vulcain. Allumage confirmé. Top, allumage UAP, décollage. Lift off, c'est parti. Franchement, euh, à le cause du plafond qui est très en bas, Henri, mais on l'entend pas. Ah oui, là, le, le, le son est vraiment. Euh, Vous l'entendez peut-être C'est important. Euh, on l'entend très, très fort. Oui, on a perdu le visuel. Yann 5 ECA. On a perdu le visuel, mais on peut l'entendre. Quel frost amazing. Ces deux powder. Ah, c'est uh, this amazing. Et the, the, the whole sky est vibrating. Yeah, even although the weather was not so good, we can really see the flames out of these EAPs and really a superb launch. And it's really climbing and going up very high in the sky, but we can still hear it very well whizzing past. I don't know if you can hear it uh, as we can. We were saying 540 tons of thrust each for the EAPs, two tons of powder consumed per second. That's 90% of the thrust which is given from the very beginning and these EAPs are going to be working a little bit more for a little bit more than two minutes so 240 tons of powder you can really hear them thundering across the sky so it's going to be the end of the work soon for these two EAPs which are going to be jettisoned from the main body of the rocket uh, because uh, everything that is dead weight, of course, is uh, useless, and that should be happening within the next few seconds. There we are. There are some uh, rockets, some distancing rockets there, eight distancing rockets that uh, make it possible to eject the two EAPs. So uh, the launcher is still around 50.5 meters. Uh, now the mass is, of course, much lower than it was at liftoff. Uh, we now only have 230 tons in flight. So what's the next step? The next step is going to be the crucial altitude of 100 kilometers when the fairing will be jettisoned. Yeah, because beyond these 100 uh, kilometers, there's no friction, no vibration, and uh, it's almost uh, interstellar void here, so no risk for the satellites. So the fairing can therefore be ejected at around 170 kilometers. And the fairing is 2.4 tons, although it's a beehive uh, composite material. Uh, so it's now lost 2.4 tons, and the launch vehicle is still racing through space. Is this, the, this is the first time that you've see, witnessed a launch from a terrace. You gave a lot of goes, but how do you feel? Um, it's actually the first time that I've uh, seen it from the Jupiter 2 terrace, and I really must say that it's something deeply moving, and uh, 
exceptional moment. Okay, so we're actually now, if Manuel de Oliveira's teams can already do so, we're going to have another look at the liftoff. We had to wait a little, but it was well worth the wait. Look at it. There it is, a powerful liftoff. So, as regards the tracking now of the launch vehicle and its passengers, it's now performed by the so-called downstream stations. Yeah, for the acquisition of the telemeasure data, we have a network of uh, ground stations all along the way. It's uh, constituted of uh, the Galio station here at the CSG of Natal in Brazil, Ascension Island in the, in the Atlantic, Libreville in Gabon, and Malindi in Kenya. So all of these stations acquire the telemeasure signal, uh, but they then need to process the data. And part of it is uh, done immediately. Yeah, we have telemeasures of, with more than a thousand parameters, but part of this flow of data is, de is uh, decrypted real time. It's what we call CVI or immediate visual control, which tell us in real time about the health of the launch vehicle. And uh, this data is then transmitted to uh, the operational teams and the various entities concerned. So there's a team that we're going to go and visit at the CVI, and they're very good at reading and uh, decoding the data and distributing it to the various people who are concerned and who make the decisions uh, on the flight. What I now suggest is that uh, we've been a little bit high on emotion here with this uh, little, uh, slightly postponed flight. You know that we had more than two hours as a launch window. There was plenty of time to launch. So um, uh, lots of emotion with this uh, liftoff for Ariane uh, 217. Uh, just a short break now before we resume and try to catch our breath. And we'll have a look at what has happened in the field of space over the last few weeks. But we'll be right back.